Let's go over for a moment to another aircraft flying with us, which has a similar complement of patients. This time in the charge of a WAF orderly. One of her special cases has a severe spinal injury and is provided with a rubber mattress. It's important to change his position slightly at intervals of about an hour to prevent pressure sores developing. This case, who is badly burned about the face, complains of irritation of the eyes. A saline solution made up from the tablets in your first aid outfit will do much to relieve the pain for the time being. This one with a serious head injury appears to be comfortable, but his condition is liable to deteriorate at any time. Give as much time as you can to the comfort of those less seriously injured. A friendly word or an occasional cigarette is a great comfort to them. On every trip, your health and attention should leave them with pleasant memories. Orderlies of both sexes should remember that some patients are shy about asking for a urine bottle. Make it known that these things are available and be sure that nobody is suffering unnecessary discomfort. Back on the first aircraft, our chest wound case doesn't seem to be so well. He seems paler, his lips have a bluish tinge and his breathing is much weaker. This is an occasion where you should use oxygen. The flow meter, which may be clamped to one of the stretcher handles, must always be checked before using. Don't assume that because it was set correctly yesterday, it's all right today. And when fitting the mask, avoid too much fiddling with the head straps. Use cotton wool pads if necessary to ensure an airtight fit. After about a minute, the patient should be breathing steadily. The bag beneath the mask will confirm this. His color will also have improved. Another look at the secondary hemorrhage is always important to see that the bleeding has been checked. Fortunately, everything seems in order and the patient is comfortable. Let's go over to the second aircraft again. Here we have another problem. Our head case, who's hitherto been quiet and restful, becomes anxious and disturbed. He kicks off his blankets and makes an attempt to get up. So another strap will have to be used to fasten his legs. It's drastic, but it must be done for his own safety. Fortunately, we are nearly home. From main base airfield, our aircraft has received the signal to come in. Ambulances and stretcher bearers, controlled by our duty officer of passenger and freight section, are standing by ready to unload. Just before landing, go around your charges once more. Tuck the blankets in securely to prevent them blowing off when the stretchers are carried into the open air. Tighten up the straps as a safety precaution during landing. Collect your mugs and other equipment and put them away. As soon as the aircraft is on her marks, the first two ambulances back up to occupy the space between the wing and the tail. Panniers and other equipment are cleared from the doorway and dumped to facilitate unloading of stretchers. The walking wounded disembark and are directed to a waiting troop carrying vehicle which will then move on to collect those from the second aircraft.
Of the stretcher cases, we now see that the serious ones, being last in, are first to come out. The thigh case, because of his secondary hemorrhage, needs intermediate treatment. The first ambulance is therefore detailed to convey him to sick quarters. The patient with a fractured skull on the floor of the starboard side is next to come out. He's put aboard the second ambulance for conveyance to the reception wards. The facio maxillary who was above him comes next and will go in the same ambulance. The chest case, like the thigh case, will also need attention at sick quarters, so he's directed to the first ambulance. 